Good morning. Good morning. I am Connie Malier, Chair of the Management and Internal Services Committee. And uh, welcome to everyone. We have a quorum here, but I want to start with, with uh, invocation. If you'll bow, bow your heads, please. Lord, thank you for this beautiful day and the warm weather. And thank you for the blessings we have, including the right to assemble and govern ourselves. Help us as we make decisions this morning that affect our neighbors and the citizens of this county. And some of these decisions are not easy, but please guide us and be sure our actions are based on truth and fairness. In your name we pray, amen. amen. Please join me for the pledge. I pledge, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, republic for which one nation, under God, indivisible, liberty and justice for all. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, as I said, we have a quorum this morning of our committee, and um, have we uh, reviewed the minutes of the previous meeting, gentlemen? Move to accept. All right. Do um, we have an approval of the agenda? Are there any changes to our agenda? Okay, being none, let's move forward. I believe we have a presentation this morning. Mr. Harris, will you please approach the podium and give us your name and address? Hey, good morning. Adam Harris, uh, 3284 Rosemont Road, Appling, Georgia. And I'm here this morning to represent Queensboro National Bank and Trust. And uh, I just want to take this opportunity to tell um, all the commissioners here and the, the county administration, thank you so much for the opportunity to submit a proposal for the banking relationship for Columbia County. And uh, we wanted to come this morning to be able to answer any questions that you may have. And we brought a few folks from the bank with us to include Bill Eastland, our president and CEO. Welcome. In case you had any questions about the bank's history, uh, future, uh, or our proposal, I uh, also just wanted to share our commitment, if awarded the opportunity to handle the banking relationship going forward, um, we would do everything we could to make sure the county's taken care of in the best way possible. But very thankful for the opportunity. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Harris. Patrice, are there any other presentations this morning? Thank you. Um, I don't see any items for our consent agenda, so let's move directly into um, debate. We have uh, board and committee appointments. Who's taking Mr. Johnson's Take um, plan? The first item for your consideration are board and committee appointments. Uh, there's <coughs> about 16 different boards and committees. While most of these are reappointments to current positions on boards and committees, some of these are include new appointments. I won't go through each one. Staff recommends approving the recommended appointments and reappointments. Moved to consent. Second. So moved. But now we would like to talk about um, our regularly scheduled Board of Commissioners meeting that would fall <coughs> normally during Masters, and we'd like to reschedule that. Who? Yes, ma'am. Uh, the staff requests to move the Board of Commissioner meetings meeting from April 7th, 2020 to March 31st. Uh, as the April 7th day conflicts with Master's Week. Uh, March 31st, I believe, is a fifth Tuesday, so nothing's currently scheduled. Staff recommend. For, heaven forbid we conflict with Master's. Right. Well, I mean, I'll be here. <laughs> <laughs> Can that go to the consent agenda, or does it have to go to debate? Consent. Move to consent. Motion? motion and second. <clears throat> so moved. Internal services. The first item I have for your consideration is an RFP for banking services. Proposals for banking services were received and opened on December 19th, 2019. Seven pro proposals were received and evaluated. After individual evaluations were done by the six members of the evaluation panel, the top two firms were invited to make presentations. Upon further evaluation, the evaluation panel recommends award to Queensboro National Bank and Trust the highest ranked proposal. I have a couple of quick questions. So, how much money are we talking about moving over? It varies. Um, I would say, on average, if you look at all of our accounts, thirty million dollars at any one time. It can go up much higher during tax season when we're collecting the tax revenues. 
We typically do move a lot of that money out into investment accounts, though. We don't hold them in, in our regular banking accounts. And uh, frankly, I don't know a lot about Queensboro. I know some of the folks. From a size perspective, Queensboro is big enough to handle this. Yes, My understanding is we're the largest depositor for a number of these banks. I have spoken with them <clears throat> to confirm that they can indeed handle, um, especially when we're transferring money in and out during tax season, that they can handle that, and they have assured me that they can. How big of a uh, deal or, re or how much trouble is it to make a change like this? I mean, it's been a long time it since we've been. made a change, and should we be going as long as we're going? Uh, without, I don't know if we looked at it. I hadn't been there that long. I don't know when the last time we looked at it. First time we've looked at it in my five years. It's been over 10 years. I think this will be the 11th year um, that we have been with uh, South State, formerly Georgia Bank and Trust. Well, why would now, typically, I would say five years is probably when we should review it, um, five to ten, 10 years being the max. Yeah, I'd think more, a lot less than that. I'm, I'm just a little bit concerned because, uh, with the length of time, mm -hmm. uh, because of, you know, they're commissioner <coughs> in five years. They, they never have a chance to visit and they may bring something to the table or they may not be able to, but uh, going five to 10 years, I, I think is just without looking at it. Right. Just throwing it out there and looking at it, not necessarily that you're gonna make any kind of changes or anything like that, but just looking at it and keeping everybody sharp. Right. Uh, you know, and um, I, I think that's something that we need to, but is it a big deal to do that or? Make the change, or it's not the change itself <laughs> that is the challenge. It's evaluating the proposals themselves, because all of the institutions are just different. They handle things different. Their interests and their service fees are different, and it's challenging to evaluate and make the decision. And you know, not apples to apples exactly. I, and if I could add to that, I I think I think looking at it at the five year point is probably the right thing to. I was thinking four at the max. I, yeah. Simply because the I, I think five is okay. I mean, yeah. four or five, we could we the, could the hash big, that out. But the big deal about it every every month we look at this and we look at where all our monies are at and interest. It's just a big part of what we do. And if you sit here for four years and you're a one termer, you don't really get to see what goes into and how how important it is for the whole scope of, of what we're doing and the, and the scope of, of these different industry uh, businesses that are trying to compete for it. it. It's obviously huge for everybody. It is. So the, the other thing I was going to add was that it can be, it can be a major move. It can be a major muscle movement to, to, tra to, to change banks. And that's a consideration when we change the banks. Are we changing the purchase card? Um, mm -hmm. Are we going from more complex to simpler, uh, either either interest rate calculations or fee calculations? Those are things that have to be considered. Um, so it, it can be difficult to move. So to move too frequently, you could find yourself creating problems for the county. Um, and, but, I, but I do think it has to be considered, at least at the five-year point. And you need to ask yourself, are you getting the level of service that you expect? Um, are things as easy as we thought they were going to be? Everybody, I think, needs to come to the table at least at that point to discuss it. Um, but it, but it can be a, a major change, and in, and in this case, the change is not so dramatic. Uh, just for a little bit of clarity, and I don't mean to be stepping on any toes or anything like that, but if it went for ten years, what prompted today to look? What, was there something that we really saw that we needed to look, or did we just felt like feel like we not, not so it? much? It was just time. It was beyond time to to visit it, and there had been some changes, of course, going you know from Georgia Bank and Trust to South State, and there just been some changes, and we just decided it was a good time to take a look at it. Well, in the course of business, we know it becomes necessary for organizations to uh, evaluate and reevaluate their business relationships, their service <coughs> contracts, and um, whether it be insurance or accounting or, 
or um, legal services, banking, and that's not, not a bad thing, nor does it speak negatively of the current provider. It's just best practices to do so. And um, going through this process to rebid and review is usually a lot of work for all parties involved, and it's often uncomfortable, and it always, it always leaves somebody disappointed. Anytime there's a, a process, a bid process, somebody is, is going to be disappointed when they walk away, but it's necessary and, and it's important. And you know, for your personal and business accounts, you can certainly use a, a more subjective, less objective criteria in looking at those things, but this is not personal banking. This is, you know, this is not my personal money. This is the, the, the money that belongs to the citizens of Columbia County. And I believe the committee, um, was a well-chosen group of folks, and it's, it was a well-thought-out matrix that they used to evaluate um, to, to evaluate the proposals. And these staff members that were on the committee are the ones that have to live with the, live with the decision, you know, to change or to stay. And um, and they're going to, have to look at those things every day regarding service and relationships. And and I appreciate the time and effort that went into these. I've sat through these on a personal level so many times going through going through that process, and it was a lot of work, and I appreciate that. And I, um, like these other gentlemen up here, I hope we don't wait another 10 years before we, before we do it again. Yes, ma'am, I, I would also add that, that when it came down to, to the final two, it was very close. Um, and it wasn't an easy decision. We had two very good candidates, uh, even more than that when you look at all seven, uh, but the two were very close, and uh, not an easy decision. And I think it's the right one. And staff's recommendation is to make the change to Queensboro. Right. Gentlemen, do I have a motion? Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll make a motion to approve to debate with a uh, with a caveat that we'll put this out to bid every four years. Unless you think it needs to be less. Do I have a second on that specific motion? I'll second that. All right. Move to the debate agenda. Thank you, gentlemen. Next, um, inmate medical services. Um, actually, the next one is the annual approval of bank accounts. I apologize. And this is just something that we require uh, to be done each year, included as a list of the bank accounts that are under the control of the Board of Commissioners. This is, does not include any of the constitutional accounts, and we just ask that you approve. Make a motion to approve. Second. So move that, and that is moved to the consent. Mm -hmm. agenda, is that correct? Okay. I apologize. Okay. Now for the inmate medical services, there was just an incorrect date when this was approved. Um, I believe back in these, or on January twenty first, it was approved. The effective date was listed as that date, the date of approval, and it actually should have been July first, twenty twenty. So we are just asking to amend the current agreement date that it is for three years, beginning on July 1st, 2020, terminating on June 30th, 2023. Moved to consent. Second. So moved. Next. The next item is the purchase of a truck for building standards. We inadvertently left this truck off of a, the bid for all of the county trucks this past year. Uh, we failed to include it. We have discussed this with the vendor that uh, the bid was awarded to, and he has agreed to honor purchase price that was in the bid, so we are just asking that we award this vehicle to Allen J. Automotive for a total cost of $28,639. Is this a new truck, or is this No, a this was a total loss. Uh, the individual was in an accident, and it's a total loss, so it will be purchased through our risk management. Can, can I ask a question on the uh, bid process data evaluation sheet? Something that said if funding could be Additional funding could be uh, located. What was that in the for the bid for the whole? That was in the original. The original bid. Okay. Have a motion on that. I think so. Yeah. All right. So moved. Second again. Next. The next item is the purchase of a van for motor motor pool. This is a budgeted item. Uh, we went out to our <laughs> contract holders. Prices. Anytime we do that, we always like to back those up with quotes from area vendors. 
most of the time the contract price is the lowest price. In this particular <laughs> case, however, it, Gerald Jones Ford actually had a lower price than our contract holder. So we are recommended that we award the uh, vehicle listed to Gerald Jones Ford for a total cost of $41,183.28, which is under the $50,000 budget. Thank you for going to the extra effort to go check those numbers. Mm -hmm. Move to consent. Second. So moved. Ms. Reese, is there anything else on your That's all list? I have. Mr. Blanchard? Um, the first item that I have for your consideration is to reject a bid for IT data center services. Um, IT has to have a specialized vendor come in because we have uh, UPS units, large UPS units in the data center, and specialized cooling units as well. So. Um, unfortunately, we just can't call a, a local firm to come in and hook up some prion to it. It requires a, a major initiative to have somebody come in, check the batteries, and also uh, go through the cooling units and certify them. So uh, IT released a bid. Unfortunately, uh, the one bid that we got was too high, so we want to reject that bid and uh, go back out again. Move to consent. Second. So moved. Next. The next item is the uh, ESRI Enterprise Agreement Renewal. Uh, two years ago, we got an ESRI Enterprise Agreement. Um, that's the software that's used by our GIS department and hence by a lot of other departments as well that are heavy GIS users. Um, I've got uh, Larry Hobbs here. He could speak if he needs to about the, uh, uh, how well that agreement's going. It's been a, an ad advantage, sorry, for the county for us to have that. And this is the third year of the three-year agreement. So what we'll have to do next year is come back with a different amount and I'll go ahead and give you a one-year advance warning because of the increase in population that we've had. One of the, the benefits of being a growing county is that this probably will cost a little bit more next year. So this year it's 109,250. Um, staff recommends approval. Move consent. Second. And this is a regularly budget. You already have this in the budget. It's already in the budget, yes, ma'am. So moved. Next. The final item I've got for you is an indefeasible right of use agreement with WC Fiber LLC. <clears throat> this is similar to uh, a lot of the other dark fiber agreements that we brought to you in the past, uh, but there is a key difference in this. Um, one of the missions that we want to accomplish with broadband is to be able to take fiber uh, not just to the, the more suburban areas, but get it out to the rural. What we've discovered is that uh, due to the infrastructure costs, the capital that's required to get um, fiber out into uh, more rural areas, haven't seen the kind of growth out there that we'd like to. Um, so uh, I've got to give uh, uh, our new broadband manager, Harold Sparrow, and uh, WC Fiber a lot of credit for working together in order to come up with something that I believe is going to help us take fiber from where we have it now and get it out among the, uh, the county roads that are not served right now. Um, WC Fiber is a last mile provider. You know, if I could digress into definitions for a second, you're aware that broadband, we are a middle mile provider. So we provide access to the last mile providers like your, your, buy your cable from. Uh, we've been missing that last mile with a lot of our rural area. So what we've worked out here is an agreement that gives them access to our fiber network at a lower cost. And what they'll be able to do with that uh, is to serve not just subdivisions, which has kind of been the target in the past, but individual uh, homes along county roads. So this helps us take advantage of our entire fiber network and hopefully have a lot of growth in residential use uh, with WC Fiber instead of just focusing on um, mass or, or, or built up areas. Uh, the way that it would work is that uh, citizens wanted to have fiber either in their neighborhood or along the road, um, they would contact us or WC Fiber. There would be a negotiation among us with WC Fiber to determine what kind of capital layout there needed to be. And then based on that, how much revenue would be generated and how much would come back to the county. So before, we just lease them the fiber and essentially walk away and they pay us <coughs> an amount for it. That's not cost advantageous for them. They can't make any profit managing that way. So this way, we have a little bit more cost sharing, but revenue sharing as well. Staff has looked at this up one side, down the other, uh, because it, it is a, a different kind of IRU, and we recommend approval. So this will give the citizens a 
break on trying to get it because I've heard numerous, you know, I've, talked, I've contacted somebody and it's $10,000 or $20,000 for me to get it. Well, uh, so will that? Yeah, let me let me answer that because if you live on 40 acres and you live in the middle of 40 acres um, and you want water, I mean, we will we'll bring it to the street, right. but you're going to have to pay to bring it to your house. Point here is that it might the fiber might be on your street, but you're still going to have to pay to have that last leg that up to your house run just like you would water. So some of those cases, and because the only reason I interjected is because I'm, I'm familiar with one that, that uh, you may be referring to. Um, they lived in the middle of a very, very large parcel. And you no, know, I mean, you're going to pay to bring water to your house and you're going you're gonna to pay to have that fiber run too. But what it will do is make that fire, fiber available at the street. Michael, did you want to add on? I'm I'm sorry for interjecting. Could, I mean, no, that's you know, correct. I, I can want to run a water line myself. I get out there and dig it and run it myself. Could I put whatever cat fire or whatever cat you use to do that? I could. Uh, but <laughs> uh, if you get me, I'll come do yours. <laughs> I mean, uh, really? I no, but 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 it's a but it's a utility, and 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 i don't think most people are going to run the, the now you could pay yes you could pay a contractor and i think most people would pay a contractor to run water to their house not dig the ditch themselves there's nothing that prevents a citizen from digging the ditch um and and, and throwing the line in and then the, whoever hooking makes it the up line. yeah sure i mean i i guess you could do that but you're going to have to splice it <laughs> well, I'm, I'm, I'm sure you don't have to get somebody else to splice it. They're they going to have to splice in. Uh, nobody wants to go out and cut the line to try and get um, in there. I wouldn't advise it. But <laughs> if, you can get it, if you can get it there. Uh, you can't tap into the water by yourself no, either. You've got to pay for the water tap. That's exactly so, I mean, right. you're, you're still but paying the cost. But it goes from 20 to 2,500, 20,000 to 2,500, or whatever. Well, I mean, these the, numbers have been crazy that I've heard. They, they have been, but I checked. I, Billy's not here, but I checked with Billy when uh, that that whole issue came up on that fiber, and he gave the amount he gave me to run a water line to the house was eight thousand dollars. Eleven thousand wasn't so outlandish for fiber. I can speak from experience trying to get it to my house, living in the middle of a big parcel, and I asked, "Can I lay my own line?" And all the companies I talked to said no. They won't control that line if it's their signal going across it. They told me no. Here's my price. If you want it, let me know. But in that case, I had it at the end of my driveway, just like we're talking here. We're making it available into the driveway, but I still had to pay them to make the connection to my house. You'll have to, absolutely. Wow. The, the great thing about this, from my opinion, is that when a citizen sees the, the, the markers that we have out there and the handholds, and they know that fiber runs in their front yard or right next to their house, this gives them an opportunity to be able to tap into it. And to me, that fulfills the, the mission of broadband and why we got the BTOP grant in the first place. But are we getting in the last mile? I mean, no, we're gonna, no. I'm just making because we said we're not going to compete. Yeah, we are not going to compete. We have no intention of going last mile, and that's something that was very clear with, uh, with WC Fiber uh, and really with any of our, our business partners. that have no intention of doing last mile, but we want to help facilitate uh, bringing the, the fiber of the home to our citizens. And this is a 10-year agreement? It's a 10-year agreement. You, typically, these are 20 years. Um, we opted for 10, mainly because this is something that, that we haven't done before. Uh, and, we, uh, and I can promise you, and I can even add this to the, uh, the quarterly reports that we do to show you the progress of this. Uh, you know, we're, we're having a 10-year approach so that we can assess every project and then determine you know, what our return on investment is going to be and, and to make sure that broadband is make revenue from this. And does WCTEL or WC Fiber, they, um, they do a lot of business in Columbia County already? All of the fiber to the home, I'm, uh, I'm not sure how much AT&T or Comcast might do, but uh, WCTEL and WC Fiber has a lot of business right now. One person at least up here can testify to it. <laughs> Good. The others won't run cable till the. They want to do it after the subdivision is built out. Yeah, they want it. They want a lot of density. They're not willing right. to go out to the. Exactly, that's and and that's what makes this a unique proposition for us. 
you know, that's a great service for the folks who do live out further. I, I, this will position Columbia County so that we'll have some of our most rural people the ability to get fiber to the home. And there's not many other places anywhere that can support that. So this, it's a little bit of a leap of faith, but it's also something that, that we have the, the staff and the ability. Move to consent. Okay. All right. Moved. Um, what do we have next? Any other committee items to discuss? Any legal matters, Mr. Driver? Thank you. Um, staff reports. Taking Scott's. Yeah, I'll take it. The personnel savings uh, report is there for your review. Uh, the total savings, 705600 Any comments, gentlemen? Again. New information on the couple of key positions we have. Yep. You hearing anything? Speak to you after this meeting. Thank you, sir. Uh, internal services. <clears throat> the year-to-date budget report is included for your review. We This is through the month of January. Should be operating around 58% as normal. I have included some of the key funds for your uh, review, and everyone is operating well within their budgets. Any comments? Mm -mm. None. Investment report? Well, actually, next is the SPLOS update, the sales tax oh, report. I, I'm getting ahead. I'm trying That's to get okay. out of here, Leanne. It's an all time high month. I'm sorry. Is that an all time high month in yeah. sales? I, I believe that it is. Two point three over two point three million dollars. And this was for the month of December, and we are currently operating at an annualized percentage increase of nine point two four percent. Interesting state being flat to down. Any other comments? Last update. Now the investment report. Yes, the investment report is included for your review, just showing how excess funds are being used. No questions. I'm good. Good. All those are accepted as information. Um, is there any other commissioner or public comment? Staff? Being none, um, we will adjourn and reconvene in five minutes. All right. Thank fine. you.
Ready? I'd like to call to order the Public Works and Engineering Services Committee meeting for February the 11th. I don't know if I gave you five minutes that we talked about, but I hope we can go. So, okay. Appreciate all my friends up here with me. <laughs> Boy, they left you. What's up? All right. Are you 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 Come coming? On, Mark. Sit up are here you coming me. up, Mark? Come on, Mark. Come sit with us. <laughs> Nick, get up here. You feel better now, Matt? Nah, now I got friends. <laughs> but nobody said next to you. I, I noticed that. <laughs> not, not close friends, close. anyway. We can talk about that later. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's do it. Uh, approval of the uh, minutes of the previous meeting. If y'all have reviewed, okay. Move to accept. Second. We'll move. Uh, no presentations at this time. Then agenda. I think we're going to have a uh, public meeting here a little bit. Cool. Yeah. We'll head right into the debate agenda and. Uh, Thank you, sir. The first one we have for you is a uh, project award for some uh, the Clark Hill Pond gate replacement. These are the gates that are used to control the outflow of water as it's being treated. Uh, low bid from BRW, the amount of $69,974. Staff recommends approval. Move to consent. Second. Move. Next one we have for you is a proposal from Zell Engineering to establish uh, a booster pump station in the creek area. So this will be close to our fire station over there transfer water from our 565 system to our 650 system, basically get water from the low area to the higher area, which is our Grovetown gateway area. This will help provide more water for that growing area. Staff has recommended approval of the fee of $87,187 based on 7.75% of construction costs. Just saying, we need to make sure we have plenty of water, water over there in the gateway area. And a high user over there, <laughs> a lot of it. Hmm. This is a cost plus Contract not a lump sum. This is designed so it's based on the 7.75 percent of the construction cost. So if the cost come in lower, the, the fee will be lower. That's our, that's our estimate of 87,000 based on what we think construction will cost. Move to consent. Second. So move. Next one I have for you is an engineering proposal for uh, bid documents for a new entrance bridge into our Crawford Creek Water Pollution Control Plant. This is our driveway bridge. Uh, it comes inundated during heavy rains time for it to be replaced. So this is an engineering proposal to work on the design for that project based on 8.9% of the actual construction cost. So we're estimating a cost of $57,850 and staff has recommended approval in a, establishing a, a budget of $650,000 in the existing Where's Billy this morning? He sure is spending a lot of money. <laughs> he did not it's show under up. The, under uh, treatment. No, no, no HIPAA violations. Receiving treatment. That's right. So this is for the expenses of the engineer, not correct approving the six fifty. We're just establishing a budget okay. in the extension renewal for this project. Clayton likes to have those have the commission bless those projects before he goes into the work on it. So he's basically if you bless this, he's going to put aside that six fifty for this project. Well then I make a motion to bless it. Second. So move. All right, next one is an engineering proposal for the pipe gallery plane painting at Blanchard and Clark's Hill Water Treatment Plant. <coughs> this is a proposal based on 5.9% of the actual construction costs, which we're estimating to be $103,250. Staff has recommended approval of that and creating the extension renewal project with a budget of $1.75 million. What mark about that? Didn't we just do a painting project somewhere in the park? Yes, sir. We did some painting at one of the plants where we did a lot of the internal structures and clarifiers and things like that. This is in our pipe gallery sections of the treatment, the water treatment facilities. Okay. Uh, and it, there are large pipes in there and a lot of uh, older sections that, that need some attention. And I think we're going to have to take these down to almost bare metal to get a good foundation for a new paint job on both galleries. And that's at both water treatment facilities for the potable water. Motion to um, consent. Second. So move. Thank you. Next we have is a public hearing on the proposed establishment of streetlight districts for River Island Section 3, Phase 2C2. So we have received a petition from the residents, or, or the developer in this case, subdivision. Uh, we have uh, 
got a cost here, upfront pole cost of $7,022.85. Our annual utility cost of $3,025.80. We have a developer contribution of $2,940. This time we'd like to uh, open up the public hearing. We did mail notifications to the property owners. Can I say something on our uh, committee recommendation sheet? It says the development contribution is $2,400 versus the $2,940. So is that... Clarify here just so when we get to the actual motion, I'll make sure we're clarified okay. for the okay. Thank you. So, are you, are you open the, the public meeting is open? We'll hear any kind of comments from the public if we have any public mm -mm. comments. Close, comments. To, we close the public hearing. Next item. All right, next we have is resolution 20 10 to establish streetlight district in River Island, section 3, phase 2C2. Have had our public hearing. Um, I just mentioned our upfront cost here. We are showing a developer contribution of $2,400 on this one. Is that correct? $2,400. So the actual motion is correct on the establishment of the streetlight district. Staff is recommending um, approval of resolution 2010. This will need to go to debate for. Move to the debate. Second. So move. Next one I have for you is resolution 20-09 to amend Northwood Section 1 Streetlight District number 266. We have received a request to install additional streetlight in Northwood due to a lack of lighting. We asked Georgia Power to go out and evaluate the subdivision, and they did recommend an additional one streetlight. Uh, upfront pole cost of $468.19 with an annual cost of $201.72. Staff recommends approval. Move to consent. Second. So moved. Next one I have for you is an easement uh, issue we have out at 6481 Carriage Lane. There's an existing 20-foot wide drainage utility easement across the middle of this property. These are two lots that were combined, so it, it put the easement right in the middle of the property. There's a, uh, a cross-drain pipe under the road that discharged at this point, so we had the easement to allow our water to hit the uh, some wetlands behind this property. Um, but the two properties being combined, uh, the owners want to put a house right where the easement is. Staff has met with the the owner, uh, they've looked at the site. Um, we will have to gra uh, grade this, the, the property to get the water to go around this location. What we'd like to do is abandon the existing easement that's in place, and then accept a new easement to allow this water to run around the house instead of right through the middle of the property. Staff has recommended abandonment of the existing easement and acceptance of the new 6481 carriage lane patch plat. Move to consent. Second. So move. Next one I have for you is a, another engineering proposal <coughs> from uh, Constantine Engineering. We had a, a contract with, with Constantine to do some monitoring of our creeks, kind of watch how quick the flood waters go through during heavy rains. Uh, we do have Wes Bond here who's doing all this uh, analysis for us. But he took that information and came up with some ideas that he could use to potentially reduce the, the flooding and the sediment load that's going down the creek. Uh, we would come in and study three different locations. One would be our Mullins Pond, one would be a, a Reed Creek Interpretive Center. The other one is in um, Wingate. There's a, a pond there that we could utilize. Um, this amounts to $38,950. There'll be some additional monitoring of the, of the streams. He'll do a limited survey. He'll do some analysis of the floodwaters and basically see what we can do on those three locations to help limit the impact of heavy rains. I do have Mr. Bonds here. If have questions, specific questions we want to talk about, he's probably going to be able to answer them a lot better than I can. Are there specific properties that were, because sure. there's several folks in there that constantly complain and they do have legitimate are, concerns. Are these are these going to address the concerns of the so specific property so the, owners? The three areas that we're looking at are all county-owned properties, but it, oh. these are already, um, one of them, two of them are already retention ponds. The third one is, is Reed Creek, our interpretive center. So uh, Mullins Pond is a, is a County owned pond has a four bay in front of it. The idea there is to reduce the water level in that pond during a normal situation. So when the flood waters do come, it has more storage. The Wingate pond is, a, is another dry detention pond right beside the creek. The idea here is to engage that pond so when the creek rises, it starts filling the pond up before it continues downstream. Um, then it would discharge back into the creek. And the Reed Creek would be the same way we, we would 
take the water out of the creek and then dump it into the interpretive center, let it flow through the interpretive center to slow down the flood downstream. Am I doing that right, Wes? Did I get <laughs> doing it right. Will that address anything above the interpretive center in that Forest Creek subdivision? I get so many complaints. No, no, I, wouldn't, I, won't I wouldn't think it would help Forest have Creek. Have anything that's, to do with them? That's uphill 28. Don't forget about my people over there. <laughs> okay. This has nothing, nothing to do with creating any more regional type ponds. This is basically just these reevaluating the way we're using the existing ones and introduce. Well, Reed Creek, the creek is not being introduced to Reed Creek until it tops the banks. In that case, we would we would lower the bank in certain areas to allow that creek to introduce into Reed Creek interpret center faster. Same thing with the wind gate. There's an existing pond there and it's dry. Water doesn't get into it. We go in there and introduce this water into that pond and use it for storage. Not creating new stuff, it's stuff that's there, but it uses it in a different way to, to alleviate the problems. Well, that's our goal is to alleviate the problems. Some of the stuff we've already done. I will say that um, we got this idea when he pitched it. Stormwater has gone out and, and done a little bit of work on the wind gate pond. Uh, we don't have the full study yet, so we don't know what all we can do, but they did go in there and, and put a the relief to let the pond start going I mean the creek start going to that pond but until we get the full study we don't know how low we can go we don't know how much uh, tension we can have in the pond without flooding somebody else so that's all the stuff we need to do certain of what what level we put this head wall how, at. how long will it take for us to get this study and start addressing some of if if we need to address and he said they can do it in 30 days he didn't, he didn't say that <laughs> Half months. Motion to consent. Second. So move. Therefore, is purchase of two Godwin quiet pumps. Uh, these are pumps that we use by the stormwater department when we have to go into into areas and, and redo pipes. We have to bypass the water around it. Most of the time, this is in neighborhoods, and so we need pumps that are quiet because they have to run 24 hours a day while we're doing the work. We're looking to purchase a four-inch and a six-inch pump size your pump based on how much water you have to flow. But we do have these in the budget. Uh, we did get a, a PSA contract in the amount of $116,487.64. The staff is recommending the purchase of those two pumps. Are these, are these new? Are we renting them in the past or what? We do rent. We've actually borrowed from water utility. When we've had you know, critical, you know, had to respond immediately. Um, we've called water utility and they've been gracious enough to let the stormwater borrow them. So these will be new for stormwater. We are renting them. We are borrowing them. How often will you use them? Quite often, they use them. So you're really borrowing them quite we often. Um, we are. I mean, every unfortunately, everywhere stormwater utility works is in the neighborhood. We're not out in the middle of the country pumping water. We're right beside somebody's house all the time. And this brand of pump is your preferred brand, or is this just the one that happened to? Godwin makes a very good pump. Make a very good pump. I think you y'all have a lot of success with them. We have a long-term relationship with them. Their support is very good. The products are very good, and reliable. Um, we've been through several pump types, manufacturers, and service providers, and this has probably been the best one that we've dealt with. Good. Motion to consent. Second. So moved. We have for you is a purchase of an excavator from Flint Equipment. This is, uh, again, for the stormwater department. This is a, a, a new piece of equipment. Uh, we are currently renting. This one we need it to do a pipe replacement projects. It was put in our budget. We did have a budget of 225.5. We did get a uh, source well contract from a local vendor in the amount of 198, 267, and 70 cents. Staff has recommended the proceed with approving the purchase of this piece of equipment. Flint equipment. Why do we need another one? This is a. Uh, it's a little bit larger. We're digging these pipes, or we're getting, having to actually go out and rent equipment. Good Lord, I thought we owned every piece of equipment known to man. <laughs> this is a big excavator. It's, it's not the biggest we've ever owned, but it's, it is bigger. Um, I believe this was on rubber tracks. Um, it's not the big metal track we'll still get on asphalt. Um, so Nick, you remember how, how long the boom on this one was? And 
rubber tracks are very expensive to maintain. Do we have a budget for the replacement of them? And how often do you feel like you're going to have to replace them? I don't think it'll be that often. These rubber tracks, they're, they're, yeah. they're durable. Um, are these the inserts, Nick? Are they, so these are inserts, and so it's metal track with a rubber insert into the metal track, so it's not... So unless you tear it up, you don't have to replace the whole thing every time. Correct. Move to consent. Second. So move. We have for you is a purchase of a compact track loader from Bobcat Augusta. This is for the stormwater department. Also, this is for our pond crew. This is a piece of equipment we use to go into our detention ponds to keep them maintained, clearing and cutting. We have a um, quote in the amount of one hundred nine thousand six hundred forty-six dollars and seventy-three. This new? It is a new piece of equipment for. Why that. do we need it? I mean. The I do. My perception is we buy tons of equipment all the time. So. so we have we have the crews that don't have the equipment. We have new pond crews that are maintaining these ponds. We just went through that uh, massive survey of all ponds that we have to maintain, identified some additional ponds that were not in our records. We are actively maintaining ponds and takes the equipment. I would say based on the, the last time we quoted it out, um, we saved probably $20,000 for every pond we do ourselves versus bidding out. So. Do five ponds ourselves, and this piece of equipment has paid for itself. Gary, your committee has been very expensive today. Mm -hmm. They generally are. Mm -hmm. Generally are. Move to consent. Second. So move. This time somebody's given us something. Not Praise mine. the Lord. Acceptance of improvements for Crawford Creek South. I gotta zoom in, I apologize. Crawford Creek South, um, section seven, Brighton Woods, Town Home Phase Two. Uh, easement plat and Anderson Farm Section 1. These are all improvements that were done by developers. Uh, they will be dedicating these to the county. And uh, staff is recommending that we accept these improvements contingent upon staff's approval of the final plat, the as built, and the warranty deeds with the two year warranty period from the date of written acceptance of the as built drawing for Crawford Creek South Phase 7. Um, for the townhomes, Phase 2 easement plat, contingent upon staff approval of the as built and warranty deed. The one-year warranty period begin the day the deed gets recorded. And for Anderson Farms, Section 1, the plat is contingent upon staff's approval of the final plat, as-built warranty deed, with the two-year warranty period from the date of the written acceptance of the as-built drawings. Clarify those two different warranty periods. We've got two-year on two of them and one-year on one. I, th I think one year showed up on more than one map. All your stuff. may be wrong on that. Verify. We'll yeah. have to go back through it and verify that. I see, I just scanned through and I do see it <clears> in <throat> multiple ones. So that maybe he hadn't updated his stuff or whatever. Matter all the other items in here customary and typical for. It is nothing special that. It's all standard, out. standard uh, procedure of stuff being built by a developer and donated to the county. Commissioner, the two-year deal is a couple of years ago when we changed the requirements. And went to that. But Brighton Woods was grandfathered in because it started before they were that? Prior to that's correct. Through before it was under the old, correct? Correct. Motion to consent. Consent. Second. So move. Change order here for the Columbia County Gateway Park. This is a time extension. Uh, this was due to some additional drainage that was designed. Y'all approved the approved that uh, months ago. Um, well as a delay on our getting our splash pad fencing. It was a custom fence that took quite a while to get it. Um, we have, the project is complete, so when you approve this time extension, you're not giving them another three months. The project is pretty much done. They're just doing punch out items. But we have to give them this time to make up to today's date. The extension of 100 days will change the substantial completion date from October 25th to February 3rd with no change in the contract amount. So it's done? It is. Move to consent. Second. So move. Next one I have for you is change order one for the Martinez Park for additional services. Um, took a slow approach into this one, getting our design fee. Uh, we wanted to kind of get a concept laid out of what the road would look like in parking lot, dog park. Then once we had that, we then wanted to walk the site with staff to figure out exactly where we wanted the trails to be based on the, the road layout. Uh, based on that, we need another $1,200 to go out and survey where staff picked these trails to be. Staff is reckoned approval of the change in the contract of $1,200. Move to consent. Second. So move. 
Driver, you have anything for us this morning? Sir, uh, staff reports. Here you have the uh, staff report for water utility. Happy to answer any questions you have there about our budget. No questions. Clary cut done? Selling tap fees right now. So yes, sir. Uh, Clary cut's done. We've uh, moved the heavy equipment out. The line's been installed. We're finishing up the final stages of pressure testing, bacteriological testing in phases. We've already got some taps uh, set up to run. Been dealing directly with customers on locations and uh, everything is going very well. Good. Thank you. Next report is an update on the water utility construction projects. You can see red shows activity in the last 30 days. I, I just have a couple of general knowledge questions, uh, Mark, if you don't mind. Uh, the Why would January on the cutoffs be so high, uh, like 642 and, uh, and last year 700? And that's, those are the two highest months. Both generally, January. right. And generally, we don't do them in December. Um, due to the holidays, they carry over. Okay, okay. A lot of moving also, people changing rental. Uh, somewhat, a little bit, but a lot of times it's uh, you, you skip that one month for the holidays and try not to inconvenience folks during that, that precious time, and it just catches up with them in January. One more uh, down at the very bottom, the inspections. I think the number <clears throat> left off because it only says 60. Other, every other month is 500 or whatever. That sounds right. Uh, let's see. I know that I have that. Oh, yes, sir. That does look like a number got left off of that. Anything else? Uh, any commissioners or public comment? Yes, uh, sir. Last week, water went down. Do a fantastic job. They surely mm -hmm. do. We f we found out about that from Facebook, but it wasn't a hey Columbia County. You might want to take a look at this. It was somebody took a picture and just said, "Hey, anybody know who I should call about this?" It was a road that was literally about to wash away. And we need to drive home the fact to people that Facebook is not the best way to contact Columbia County. The roads washing away. Dial nine one one. Tell somebody who was there before it washes away. Matt, to that end, the, the picture. But you don't get any likes for that, Matt. Mm -hmm. But to that end, the, pi the picture was taken during the day, and we didn't find out about it until. Yeah, the picture was, it was. What, eight? Daylight, and somebody took a picture and shared it with their friends. Look at the road, it's washing away. Who should we call? About 7 o'clock that night, somebody finally reached out and said, hey, your road's washing away. Right. Uh, I do appreciate our guys and our staff and, and all, all, all departments, you know, the weather goes crazy and they get busy and, and, and they handle things and they just make it happen. So I want to commend each and every uh, one of those members of all of those uh, departments. Mm -hmm. so, anything else? Just a quick question. I understand they're going to open the gates tomorrow. Is today the 11th? Is it I think the Corps is going to open the floodgates of the dam tomorrow, my perception, and so I'm not sure downstream if that matters. Yeah, yeah. Yesterday it was full, it was four foot above full pool uh -huh. and, and rising. Uh -huh. Expecting rain. Yeah, so North Georgia is getting slammed right now with, oh, with heavy rain. rain. right. And but flooding. I, just, I don't know if we need to prepare for anything, intake, anything downstream that affects us. I mean, I, I assume River Island Golf Course will be underwater there by the river. Anything else? No executive session items. We are adjourned at 927. Thank you, sir.